Well, hello there, everybody. This is Cameron Day broadcasting to you via Blog Talk Radio. My website, as most of you probably know, is ascensionhelp.com. If you've never heard that domain before, I guarantee you will never forget it. Again, that's ascensionhelp.com. So for those of you who have never heard of me before or haven't visited my website, just to give you a quick thumbnail overview of what I'm doing with my site. The first level of it is simply to give freely tools that people can use, anybody can use, to heal their own minds, to heal their souls, to heal the past, the things that we're holding on to, and ultimately to transcend the limitations of the ego mind. In addition to those free tools, I also do remote energy healing sessions. I don't work on the physical body so much. I mainly work on your energetic, spiritual, mental, your soul body, your light body. But I don't want this show to be too much of a rehash of what I do or what I'm about. For those of you who haven't seen the site, please do go to ascensionhelp.com. There's about 90 minutes of free audio and video of all the self-clearing techniques on the site. And what I'm going to do today, at least to start with, is to answer some questions. I've been getting a lot of wonderful feedback, a lot of very loving, uplifting, grateful feedback, which I am also very grateful for. It's good. It's just a great feeling to know that the information that I'm putting out is actually helping people. And I've got quite a few questions that have been piling up in my inbox. So rather than, say, spend four hours writing an article, which some of these requests and questions will uh, require, I thought it would be better to do a broadcast so that everybody who may have this question that one of you has can hear the answers. And one of the first ones that I want to address right now is somebody asked me that, um, let me just find her question here. She was concerned about opening her crown chakra and not being protected from outer influences. And so she wanted to know what would stop her from being affected from outer influences. And then another question from another person. She sensed at one point while she was doing a section of the self-clearing system, she felt reptilian presences in the room. Now, she wasn't particularly scared of them, but she felt them and thought she should be concerned because in the general spiritual hierarchy, so to speak, or the cosmology that's been put out there, the reptilians get a pretty bad rap. And not always undeserved, but at the same time, in a sense, they're just like you and me. They're just in funny-looking reptilian bodies and and on a slightly different frequency. And so getting back to what is going to stop me from being affected from outer influences when I open my crown, and uh, it's very nice in in the chat there that exactly there are no outer influences. Of course, I can't say that right off the bat to just everybody because they need to go through a process of experience to get to that point where they understand that there's no outer influences. So starting back at the beginning, every single thought, every single attitude that we have acts as a channel or a gateway to energy. So if we have a loving thought, then we are opening up gateways, we're opening up channels to loving influences that appear to be outside of us because in this reality everything appears to be separated. When we have a judgmental, angry, 
fear-based thought towards another person, towards our society, or towards our government, then we open up a channel to receive more of that energy. And so psychic shielding, in a sense, in a very real sense, imagine your sphere of consciousness as a ball of light. And in a perfected state, so to speak, every thought, every feeling, every vibration within your sphere of consciousness will be geared towards love, oneness, allowing, forgiving, so that you can move through the world in a state of absolute, unadulterated light that all of the ascended masters that we all know and love embodied when they walked this planet. However, being that most of us are in some stage of becoming and transcending our old selves, our old limitations and ways of thinking, transcending our egos, we're not broadcasting 24-7 from a state of pure love. And so we begin to attract negative, so to speak, influences. I'm not a big fan of the words positive and negative because those really just denote polarities, but I will use them in this context because they're familiar for most people. And so because we have negative thoughts, negative attitudes, judgmental attitudes, attitudes of resisting, despising, etc., because let's face it, there's quite a bit in the world that's judgeable, easy to judge, easy to get worked up over, easy to get emotional over. That's one of the great challenges and one of the great beauties of life on this planet. And so let's say, as an example, somebody through a lifetime of judgmental thoughts is feeling what they have deduced to be a psychic attack coming to them fairly regularly from the outside world. And then they read about psychic shielding and they think, well, that's a good idea. After all, I put up a big fence around my house. Why not put up a fence around my mind? And they do all the rituals of whatever that particular process and that particular teacher said to shield themselves. And they put a lot of energy into these shields and it works for a little while. But then the next day, they go back into their judgmental thoughts and they feel a psychic attack and they put up the shields again. And this back and forth can go on forever if you want it to, but hopefully you don't. In fact, you're listening to this, I would imagine, because you're a little tired of the constant battle. And that's what it really becomes. It becomes one person's ego attempting to shut out, to resist the aspects of themselves that they have created their own consciousness, their own thoughts that magnetized a seemingly external attack. And so what I am encouraging people to do is to see beyond that conflict. Because just like war never creates peace, psychic battles will not create peace. And lest anybody think that I just popped into this planet in a glowing ball of light and never had to deal with any of these types of things, uh, I want to let you know that I am speaking from years of experience and having done all of the shielding routines in the past. Ancient history at this point but I did, I did go down that route. So through, through my own trial and error, I realized that it wasn't doing me any good to try to push, push, push away. When I instead went inward 
and realize that everything that was coming to me was being attracted by my own consciousness. That was the beginning of my process of transcending the need to shield, transcending the need to resist or push away anybody else's energy. Uh, Seagirl, my name is Cameron Day, and my website is ascensionhelp.com. Uh, there's a bio there for me as well, so you can read a little bit more about it. And, it, and Lastinia is exactly right. It should be trial and error for everyone. And I believe everybody should absorb as much information, as much teaching as they possibly can, and then find what works for them. And not everybody's protection will be the same. Correct. And so what I'm offering is a perspective of transcending even the thought of protection to a point where everything that is coming to you, if it's an energy that you do not want in your sphere, I have a very simple technique that's part of the self-clearing system on my website called Energy Refund. And in this process, it's very simple. You tune into your higher self. You engage what I call the cosmic flush. And then you simply ask your higher self to return all harmful, unloving projections that anybody is sending your way. And you ask your higher self to lovingly return those projections back to the higher self of the sender. And then the key part of this, the most powerful part, you ask your higher self to return to you all of your own harmful, unloving, judgmental thoughts and energies that you have projected out onto the world. And in so doing, in a sense, you've disengaged a psychic attack just from that very simple process of an energy refund. It's very critical not to do it from your ego because then you will be just perpetuating a psychic struggle where you're, you're attempting to shove somebody's projected energies back onto them with generally a little bit of ex, your own extra judgment on top of that. So rather than judging someone else for judging you, Simply allow your higher self to return their energy to them. Take your own energies and your own judgments back. And then at that point, you can ask your higher self, what is it in me that has created this situation? And then from there, you can begin to reclaim your power from your own attitudes and your own judgments. And that is, in, you know, it's extremely simple, extremely um, basic, because I don't want to, at least in this point of the broadcast, get into uh, going through all of the details of these particular processes. But simply taking responsibility for your own projections, taking them all back, and then asking your higher self, of, to send any harmful external projections back to the higher self of the sender is going to handle about 95% of the psychic attacks that you'll experience during the day. Most of what people experience as psychic attack is simply somebody out there who's really pissed off at you thinking about all of the ways that you are causing them problems. Really, they're blaming you for their own state of mind. And they're sending you unconsciously all of the venomous energy that they're thinking about in their minds. Because all of our minds are connected. And knowing that all of our minds are intricately connected, and as you take it higher and higher, to the more refined levels of existence, when you get to a certain point, you notice that everything is one. 
we're all from the same source, the same creator, 